Good morning and welcome to Wakefield Baptist Church. This morning we will be hearing from Andrea and Mark. Andrea and Mark are members of Wakefield Baptist Church but spend most of their time in Africa, in the country of Chad, in the town of Bardai. Mark and Andrea share the love and care of Jesus through their work as doctors and through their friendship with the people of Bardai. I think it is a blessing to us when we hear about their work there. So I pray for us this morning that we are inspired by their words, that God inspires us to our own acts of showing Jesus' love and care. Hi everyone, it's really good to be with you in Wakefield this morning um, and here we are actually in Bardai wearing our usual garb, Mark in his um, turban and me in my lafai and uh, standing in front of our house ready to go and we're going to tell you a bit more about what it's been like this last year in Bardai. Well from this aerial view you get an overall impression of the town with the rocky mountains beside it and the hospital nestling on the wadi floor. Let's get a bit closer and look at life in the desert through Bardai in numbers. Now, we recently got some statistics from the Ministry of Health, and it says that the population of Bardai is estimated to be 5,500 people. 
Well, that was based on the figures from 2010, and that was before the gold rush. And probably there's at least two or three times as many people in the town now, and the population of Trebesti has similarly doubled to about 80,000 people. As a consequence, the hospital is busier and it now has 32 beds rather than the 21 that we had previously. And we can see why that's been necessary if we look at this graph. Previously, we had one patient a night in 2017 actually sleeping in the hospital. That went up to four, then to nine, and in the past year, we had 12 patients sleeping in the hospital uh, every night. At times, the 21 beds would have been completely full. So it's just as well we made the change. And we've been doing the same sort of things that we've been doing before, but perhaps in larger numbers. Uh, the last year we treated 63 patients with leishmaniasis. That was mainly children. Um, it's a disease, as you remember, maybe remember, that causes um, anemia, a low white count, a fever, and swollen liver and spleen, and eventually the child will die um, if they're not treated. And we've been fortunate enough to continue with our free drugs, um, which were given to us by the Ministry of Health, and that has enabled us to treat all these people for free. It takes uh, 17 to 30 days to treat them, depending on what uh, treatment regime we use. And uh, it's amazing to see children really sick, going home completely well and running around. And the really good news is that we had some visitors from the um, Ministry of Health and they came and checked out what we were doing and they were quite pleased, which was good. And as a consequence, they're going to get together with the World Health Organization and they're going to start a new program, which is hopefully going to be spread out over other parts of Chad as well. And will mean that we still carry on getting the drugs, tests and perhaps more things that we need, even things like um, treatment for malnutrition, which the, some of these children do have. So this is all really exciting. Now, obviously, we're not working there on our own. Um, and here's the one of the latest teams. Actually, this is about a year ago. Um, you can see two doctors. We had some doctors come up um, in September a year ago, and that was really exciting to have new doctors working with us. And there's two doctors, there's Mark, and then two nurses who were there at the time and uh, one of the lab staff. Now, the sad news is that out of all these people, apart from Mark, there's still there's only one doctor still working at the hospital. And this is an ongoing problem, although quite a number of doctors are brought up to the Tibesti for one reason or another. They're no longer there. And although we start training them, then they're not there again. So it is quite difficult for us. And in fact, shortly after this slide was taken, um, we had no doctors, at, no, no nurses at all. And uh, this was just one of the many, many times when we realised that we weren't alone and your prayers were effective and we were working along with God. So suddenly the two nurses that were in the other picture decided that uh, they'd had enough. They're contractual nurses um, and they, they'd been too busy, they reckoned, they'd been there too long and people weren't treating them too well. So they, they left, they just left like that. Um, but God was there helping us and uh, Two of these nurses uh, are actually military nurses who were in the town. We knew them from church and they agreed to step in and come and help at the hospital. And another one was one that for some reason was just uh, wandering around town and someone had heard about him. He was looking for a job. Why he was doing that in Bardai, goodness knows. But anyway, there he was. And they agreed to come and work at the hospital. And it was just great because they stepped into their roles. It was a bit... Um, a bit of fun really, <laughs> not really. <laughs> it was a bit of a laugh because they were the military guys obviously were used to treating um, men and not children so there was a bit of a steep learning curve while they measured up the doses for children instead of adults um, and we had to keep an eye on them but but yeah it was great to have them step in and help out in such a way and then eventually BMS um, enabled us to get some more nurses up um, more contractual nurses until more recently we've had government nurses working with us but it's a real problem so far in 2020 we had 18 nurses pass through the hospital never more than six at a time so you're constantly retraining and it is actually quite difficult uh, to try and keep up standards of care with this now as you know prior to 2017 whenever a woman required a cesarean section 
uh, she had to go to the hospital in fire, which was two days away. And uh, thankfully now, with Andrew being present, cesareans are done as they are needed. In fact, over the past year, we've done about 120 surgical operations. Let's look at the 11 uh, major abdominal operations that we've done. Well, one was done for a strangulated hernia, which required a bowel resection, and another was done for a patient with a ruptured bladder after a car crash. But the other nine of the 11 operations were due to wounds due to weapons. So four people have been shot, four people stabbed, and one person injured by a hand grenade. There's a real epidemic of violence in the area, which is causing a great deal of suffering. If we think back to the person who was injured by the hand grenade, that was a particularly terrible incident. I've paused the video here to make you aware that the story told in the next 20 seconds of this video is quite unsettling and maybe unsettling for any children watching. A psychologically unstable man was at a wedding. He pulled out the pin on a hand grenade in a crowded room. He and two other people uh, died and there were 26 people brought suddenly to the hospital. Some people went off to Libya because the queues were so long, uh, but we operated through the night and the patient who had the multiple wounds to his bowel, well, he survived, uh, as did everyone else who we uh, treated in the hospital. The population were very grateful for this. I think it really increased their confidence in the hospital that it was there to help them in times of need. And uh, the local Islamic committee uh, got together and made the certificate uh, to thank us for the work that was done. They came to the hospital one morning, along with somebody with a mobile phone, and as there's no, no, new, no newspaper in the area, uh, it gets posted on Facebook. There's a TEDA Facebook page which goes out to Libya and Niger and, of course, uh, to Chad. And subsequently, people coming down from Libya would greet us and ask us if we were the doctors who they'd seen. And we hope that God gets the glory for that as well. Working in Bardai, as you've seen, can be difficult, but there are some difficulties which you might not expect. And this is the local delegate, and he's the head of health for the region, and he should really be working at Bardai. Over the past year, he's only spent 21 working days with us. The rest of the time, he's really been down in the capital. That makes strategic planning difficult. The director of the hospital, it does the same thing. He's recently been appointed six months ago and he spent two weeks at Bardai so far. The hospital pharmacist has been absent for half the year. Thankfully, I've been working with Mohammed, who's also been absent a fair bit, visiting his family in Libya. But when he's been there, he's been encouraging me to help him get the pharmacy organised and uh, we've been able to make some improvements. So all in all, the absences can be difficult and no more so than when we were thinking about our response to COVID-19 back in March and April last year. Because we needed, knew we needed to have some sort of isolation facility in case of an epidemic. And yet there was nobody to plan for it. Until a local official, the prefect, suggested that we use this police station, which was deserted, and turn it into a COVID unit. It was ideal, it's got a wall around it, it's got buildings, and we could transform it into wards. The only things that were lacking were the water supply, the electricity supply, and the equipment. Uh, thankfully, BMS helped us with a grant, uh, and we were able to make a lot of infrastructure changes, and then we had stored equipment, and uh, we were able to put it all together, get oxygen masks from the UK, and have a pretty good unit. We actually only admitted one patient, we were able to be dressed in PPE supplied by the government and uh, look after them appropriately. And thankfully, there were a handful of cases, but there never was really sustained transmission in Bardai, for which we're very thankful. Hopefully, the growing epidemic in N'Djamena and uh, especially in the south of Libya won't lead to a reinfection. Now, being in Bardai, it's quite difficult to take a break. We did try to do that when we realised we were getting a bit tired after all these various things that were going on. Um, and uh, we ended up at the hospital 
operating on some more wounded people. So um, we decided that uh, we really needed to get to Injamina. And again, uh, we were really fortunate and God stepped in and enabled a, a MAF flight down with some other missionaries to Injamina and also a flight back that was already taking place. It was really excellent. And so we ended up in this place here, which looks rather snazzy. It is actually, it's nice. It's a missionary retreat centre uh, and it's by the river. And basically you can just relax there. And uh, it was really good just to be there and, uh, and not have people knocking on our door um, asking uh, if we could come down to hospital. And uh, we also thought, right, we're in, in Jemina. Hospital needs some drugs. So we ended up uh, going to the hospital uh, going to the central pharmacy um, and actually managing to get nearly all the drugs that we needed for the next three to six months in in Bardai with just four visits it was really excellent and uh, we actually some tedder people that work at work there as well so it's quite interesting when you go there they're, they're keen to help and uh, of course we're not going to drive them all back in this uh, um, land cruiser to uh, to Chad uh, up to Bardai because it was a, it's, it's a bit of a long way so fortunately we have the flight that we were on and MAF managed to get a lot of the drugs onto the flight and over the year MAF have actually taken up more than a thousand kilograms of supplies up to the hospital uh, it's really amazing that includes solar panels as well as drugs and uh, it, we are really glad that they're, they're so keen to work with us. Now imagine going to hospital at night say 10 o'clock and finding out that the generator was turned off an hour ago and you're being seen by torchlight. Well, that has been the situation at Bardai Hospital until last year, when with a grant from BMS, we were able to install solar panels on the wards, on the emergency room, and also in the laboratory. So that at night there is power and even by day in the laboratory. It's been a big improvement. Unexpectedly, uh, a European Union and um, Ministry of Health uh, team uh, turned up to put more solar panels into the hospital. They're actually designed for Bardai Health Centre, which doesn't exist. Uh, so we co-opted them and put them on top of the operating theatre instead. And now the operating theatre and the maternity can both function at night uh, without putting the generator on, which is great for carbon emissions, but even better for having a good functioning hospital. It's five years since we made our first visit to Bardai Hospital. And uh, this is a photo of me having a look at the X-ray equipment which was installed, already thinking that really it was pretty good because it's been specifically designed for use in Africa. Unfortunately, they didn't install a dark room at the same time. So it's just been sitting there unused. We now have the electricity supply necessary to make it work. And getting, uh, all the chemicals across the desert and getting a technician really skilled in developing films would be difficult. But there is a better solution, and that is to install a digital system. And we're hoping to do that uh, with help from BMS over the coming year, which would be a big improvement for dealing with the fractures that we see, and also for helping with the children with chest infections and other problems. Now we sometimes encounter strange things on our way back and forth to the hospital, and this was one of them. Um, there's often goats around, but this one had got particularly hungry looking for something in a bucket and it got stuck on his head. And uh, actually it was really cooperative and Mark managed to get it off and he ran away and uh, we haven't seen him do the same thing again. So perhaps he's a little bit intelligent as well. Anyway, it was a bit of an amusing thing on the way home. Other good things that uh, we've been able to do this year, it, well, this was Mark really, he got invited out to, to harvest dates um, with Salah who works at the Language Centre. And this is Salah up the tree, you can just about see, throwing down a regime of dates and they managed to harvest uh, seven sacks full of dates, uh, rather a lot. They're a little bit dry, they dried a little bit on the, um, on the trees, um, but yeah, we ended up with quite a lot at home and had to try to think what to do. And one thing I did was make a cake and take it to Salah to say thanks, so that was quite fun. We've also been at church um, and uh, that has been more difficult because of COVID and the government did put out um, some instructions that, that we shouldn't have services and for a while that happened. Um, and that was really difficult for the people who, who are Christians in Bardai. Um, they're all from the south, none of them are Tedder, and they really rely on the church as a source of um, 
social gathering and their friends and and yeah just something to do really because there's uh, really not a lot to do when they're not with their family and friends um, and away from them and uh, but this was taken just before we had shut down um, and the um, these are the church members or some of them cleaning the, the cleaning the hospital they did it like a new year's present and uh, it was really good uh, people were like oh what's this what's going on and uh, it was really a good demonstration of um, practical christian love and people were were really astonished that people would just come and, and clean some uh, something that didn't belong to them so that was really good and church itself perhaps numbers are down i think people haven't traveled as much up to bardai um certainly the wives and families and uh, um, so yeah but it has been continuing and uh, and when it was closed people did meet in small groups as well so um but people at church really do need prayer um because it is it is hard for them just uh, being such a small number of christians in the town this is something that's also not been uh, we've not been able to do as much as possible because of um, of COVID, which is going to weddings and naming ceremonies. Although this was taken just before uh, again we had lockdown, and uh, it is really good when you can join with people. And one of the problems has been that people have still carried on having the weddings and the and the ceremonies, um, and people have come down from Libya where Mark as Mark said there's a lot more uh, COVID as well. So as as um, as doctors at the hospital we really felt that we couldn't do that and so it's been difficult for people to fully understand why we haven't gone to to certain celebrations and 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 it is actually just uh, been a bit sad because uh, it is a really fun thing to do not just meet people at the hospital but meet them outside and and do different things with them so we do like everybody pray that there, there will be less of this when we get back and certainly numbers are low and they're very very low in bad eye so yeah maybe that'll be so perhaps you can remember the days before lockdown when you could actually go on a good hike well this is one which we enjoyed doing last year we set off early one morning um, before the sun was really high and uh, had breakfast at this area called the painted rocks they were painted by a frenchman just after the um, a Chadian army with the help of the French had liberated this area from uh, Libya who'd invaded it. It was in about 1990. Anyway, we had a good round trip, 13 and a half kilometers, walking across mainly sand, but a fair bit of rock. So it's quite hard going. And it's, it's good to get a bit of exercise. Uh, the, the next day, I still had my GPS in my pocket and I was able to uh, walk around the hospital and I was rather surprised when I got home to find out that I'd actually done 12 and a half kilometers just walking around the hospital. So I get my daily exercise even when I don't go on a planned walk. Wandering around in deserts is something which has happened historically. This is a desert, it's not the Tibesti, it's actually Sinai and it's where Moses and the people of Israel wandered around. It's all recalled in the book of Numbers which in the Hebrew is in the desert, which happens to be the title of what we're talking about. Anyway, the people of Israel were wandering around in the desert and they were getting rules how to live. And they lived in violent times. And they didn't really know the love of God in the way that we know it now through Jesus. And that makes us think about the Tedder people who've also been in a desert actually for generations. And they have their own book of rules and they also have the Quran. And this sort of guides their lives. They also live in turbulent times. We've talked about the violence. And we hope that our presence can enable Jesus to be known of better in that place and that peace will come to it. We want to thank you for your support, giving, prayers um, for us. And uh, these are our prayer points. Um, we want to give thanks to God for the way he's been with us in so many different situations and for many patients who've been healed unexpectedly and yeah with the very little that we've been able to do throughout the year and we do continue to pray that we will end up with more enthusiastic and permanent colleagues whether that's the nurses or the um, more senior staff um, it will really make a difference to what we're trying to do at the hospital 
obviously we want to pray for an end to the violence and conflict which is just seems so unnecessary at times and it's just really difficult to to constant to be seeing that suffering we want to pray too that we may deepen relationships which have been started by the medical work sometimes it's with the nurses sometimes with patients sometimes it's not by the medical work at all but just with our neighbors and we pray too that we will continue to find more time to um, to learn more Tedder language so that we can actually share more with people. And then obviously we have our plans for the future, more solar energy and uh, the X-ray facility. And we've um, recently found that we can't go back to Chad on the 25th of February as planned um, because um, they don't allowing UK nationals in at the moment. Uh, because of the COVID variants and so we need uh, prayer and wisdom as to how and when we may be able to return to Chad and various things are being looked at and we just pray that uh, those things will, will come to a good fruition and that we will get back um, and as, as soon as possible. Thank you for listening. Dear Lord, we we give you praise and thanks for your presence in Bardai, for being there with Andrea and Mark and their colleagues and their friends. Lord, we thank you for all the patients that have been healed throughout the last year. And we give thanks that more people will be helped through the work that Mark and Andrea are doing. We thank you, Lord, that there have been few COVID cases there. And we pray, Lord, that where Cases of COVID are growing in the surrounding areas of Bardai, that your hand will be there, that there will be good protective factors there and that people will be healed and that it won't get any worse. Lord, we thank you that Mark and Andrea were able to have a break away and have some time um, to rest. And Lord, we pray that they continue to have those moments of rest in their heavy workload. Lord, we want to say thank you for the church that they are a part of in Bardai. We thank you for those Christians um, and for the way that they are sharing your love to their friends and neighbours in Bardai. Lord, we ask that you bring colleagues to the hospital there, colleagues who will be able to stay and that they will be a great part of the team that is already there. Lord, there is so much difficulty in the area with violence and Lord, we just ask that you bring an end to that, that your peace will be in the area. We ask for your healing uh, for all the people that are coming into the hospital with wounds because of the violence. We pray that, that these incidents will just become less and less and that your peace will surround all people there. Lord, we give thanks for the technological benefits of more solar panels at the hospital. And we ask, Lord, that those, uh, those developments do continue. Um, we pray that you see that the x-ray facilities um, can come along and that they'll be able to have a, a digital system. Lord, we thank you for your hand in all the different areas um, of organisation to make these things happen. And once again, we... We thank you, Lord, that Andrea and Mark and their colleagues are able to heal people with their skills and with the help of all these different technologies and resources. Lord, we, we ask for your blessing upon Andrea and Mark in all that they do and in their lives in Bardai. And Lord, we ask that you enable them to return there soon, that all the different administrative details um, paperwork, everything that needs to happen. Lord, we ask that you see to that so that they can return to Bardai and continue to be your hands and your feet and doing your work, Lord, uh, for those people, their friends, their neighbours, their patients in Bardai. We ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. A reflection based on Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your sacred tent? Who may dwell on your holy mountain? 
those whose walk is blameless and does what is righteous and speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbour and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person but honours those who fear the Lord and keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind. Who lends money to the poor without interest and does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. This psalm talks to us about the characteristic that God wants us to have and wants us to show to others. Jesus, when asked how we should behave, said, to paraphrase, we should love God and love one another. This psalm shows us how, as the Holy Spirit abides in us, we may show the love of God in us to others. Verse two describes our personal spiritual life the need for us to be righteous and blameless and truthful, reflecting the characteristics of God in our lives. Verse three talks about how we show our love to others, especially when we are speaking. We are not to slander, cause no harm and speak no wrong. Verse 4 then speaks about the way we act. We should distinguish between good and evil, loving what God loves and rejecting behaviour that God rejects. We need to honour those who act as God wants, especially when they continue when it's hard for them to do so. And finally, verse five talks about our use of money, the economics of our behavior, lending to the poor without interest and not accepting bribes. As we work in Bardai, through the Holy Spirit acting in us, we try to show God's love in these ways. At times it is not easy when we're faced with seemingly random decisions over nurse allocation, after all, a vital resource, or government money not being used to further the growth of the hospital, and behaviour that often compromises the truth. I am sure for all of us, wherever we are, we are faced with similar problems in our lives, especially in these difficult times. We have often been encouraged by remembering a quote which comes from a book called The Air I Breathe by Louis Giglio. He maintains that our whole life can be worship and can honour God. And he says, When we choose to do what is right in a given situation, God is worshipped. Even if no one else notices or cares, God does. Even if ridicule follows, God is honoured. In that moment, God's truth is reflected back to him. And even if we somehow get penalised for our honesty, God is honoured by our sacrifice. May we all be encouraged by these words to live lives honouring to God by letting the Holy Spirit act within us. Let us finish with a prayer together. We're going to use the words of a Celtic prayer that Mark and I use in the mornings each day. Christ, Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, 
Christ beside me, on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. Amen. Hassan is one of our medical colleagues at Bardai Hospital and is pictured here travelling back with us to Bardai last August. He's still there. In fact, he's been the only doctor there since early December. He's used to being away from home. He spent six years studying medicine in Cuba and as soon as he came back to N'Djamena, was sent to the Tibesti. He is respected and liked by the local people, and he works hard to serve them. He is also quick and keen to learn, and as such makes an ideal colleague. But he's more than that. He is also a good friend, who likes discussing music and especially football. This season has even started following Leeds United. 
This time tomorrow, having already checked on the inpatients, he'll be working through the queue of outpatients, all keen to be seen after the weekend. Pray for him as he responds day and night to the needs of the population. It's tiring and he needs all his usual patience and calmness. And also pray that he can get some time to relax and watch a match in the evening. Father God, we pray for Dr. Hassan. We thank you for the gifts that you've given him his medical skills, his commitment, his willingness to learn and his thirst for knowledge. We ask that you bless him tomorrow as he does his rounds at the hospital and we ask you to give him the gift of healing to ensure that he is giving the best treatments to all his patients. We thank you for the friendship and kinship he offers Mark and Andrea and we ask that you bless him and watch over him and walk with him in all his endeavours. Amen. This week was the start of Lent. I hope you're able to make your pancakes on Shrove Tuesday and then begin the time of Lent on Ash Wednesday. As a community, we are following a book called Live Lent, hashtag Live Lent. And we're learning and thinking about the story of God and how God's story is our story. And this week has begun with stories of people being invited into Jesus's story. So I encourage you to read those sections and Bible passages each day and to think about how Jesus' story is your story and how you might like to share that with other people. This coming week, we are encouraged, as well as reading those uh, sections from the book, we are encouraged to read one of the Gospels in its entirety. This is something we've done at Wakefield Baptist Church each Easter for, for many years. We've gone through the whole of Mark in one evening um, in Holy Week. So perhaps you might like to read Mark this week or maybe one of the other Gospels. It is a great blessing that we have these stories of Jesus to read and it is wondrous that Jesus invites us to be part of his story. I am pleased to let you know that next Sunday will be a baptism service. James and Hamid Reza will be being baptised next week and we will be able to share in that with them next Sunday. Please do come along as we celebrate with them saying, Jesus, I believe and I choose to follow you. This is a great moment. Please be there for them. In a moment, we will close with the sung blessing after which we're going to share communion over Zoom. The link for the Zoom meeting is the usual WBC coffee and chat. Zoom meeting, you'll find that in the weekly MailChimp email. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. May the peace of